Welcome back to Danny Phantom Month, the month where I make videos about Danny Phantom. Uh, today we're talking about episode two of the first season, which is called One of a Kind. So the plot, um, Danny is doing poorly in one of his classes, so Sam suggests that they do a research project on the purpleback gorilla that's in the town's zoo. Meanwhile, uh, Danny is being hunted by Skulker, the Ghost Zone's greatest hunter. He's a pretty commonly recurring villain throughout the series. In this season, he's played by Matthew St. Patrick. He's only in a couple episodes, but then later on, whenever they wanted to use Skulker, which was quite often, um, they just got Keith Michael Richardson to do it because he's got a deep voice, so if you need a villain, just get him to do it, I guess. Why don't you tell Ted that just knowing he's out there thinking about you, caring about you, makes you feel safe. So all your fears, all your yesterdays wash away, and only hope remains in the promise of his embrace. We also introduce the box ghost in this episode, who's one of the best uh, recurring characters of the series, who's just the lamest uh, villain. And that's what's fun about him, is that he sucks. He's more of a nuisance than an actual, like, issue for Danny, which is fun. We also see, of course, the return of the Fenthermis from the last episode, and this, of course, is now a main item in the arsenal of Danny and his group of friends. There's a subplot about Jazz trying to get an article written about her mom in Genius Magazine, a genius magazine by women geniuses for women geniuses to try to prove that her parents aren't crazy. Um, there's a couple good jokes early on, but this doesn't really come into play all that much. Jack also invents the ghost gabber, which translates stuff that ghosts say. So Danny says like, boo, into it, and then it's like, I am a ghost, fear me. And they don't catch on because they're idiots. This doesn't really come back even within the episode all that much. And from my recollection, they don't really do anything with it later. The main plot device of this episode is Tucker's PDA, which sort of dates the series a lot. As nobody uses PDAs, which stood for Personal Digital Assistant, I had to look that up because I completely forgot. No one uses those anymore, but it's the equivalent. It was the equivalent of a smartphone, more or less. Um, just a little bit ahead of its time, and I don't know if you could call people on it. I can't remember. Some people did have them, I never did. Um, but of course Tucker is a big tech guy, and so that's like a big part of his character and will be used in many episodes later on. In this episode, Skulker uses it because his, his technology is so outdated that Tucker's PDA seems really advanced for him, so he plugs it into his battle suit. Then the like joke of the episode is that Skulker is now bound to follow the schedule that Tucker has set up in his PDA for Danny to, so that Danny could learn more about this purpleback gorilla. So the main conflict kind of becomes more comedic this episode, as every time that Skulker tries to like capture Danny, he ends up having to fly off to the library to put to check out a book on gorillas. It takes Danny way too long to figure that out, but I guess that's why he's a D student. But then once they do, they use they inevitably use that to defeat Skulker. We also see for one of the only times in the series that um, Skulker, who appears to be this big, like, muscular, threatening uh, guy, is actually a tiny little a uh, ghost inside of a large battle mech suit thing. It's very Men in Black, and yeah, it's just kind of like, aha, you thought he was big and scary, but he's actually little and not scary. This is one of the only episodes that really goes into that and all. There's also some interesting inconsistencies I noticed with later on in the series. There's one scene where Skulker's, like, green flame hair is blue, and I don't know if that was just something that he can do sometimes, or if it was like a lighting thing, but uh, I thought that was interesting. He also says that he's the the ghost world's greatest hunter, where later on they call it the ghost zone. I think in the canon, that's the name that Danny gives it, which is just like something he thought was cool sounding, I guess. But then they also like just have other ghosts that are from the ghost zone, like refer to it as that. So, I don't know. 
Fun fact, which Hartman, the creator of the series, wanted to originally call it The Phantom Zone, but of course he couldn't because uh, DC Comics exists. So there you go. There's also a joke that like doesn't exactly age well, um, where Sam takes a photo of Danny and Tucker, who have fallen asleep kind of like cuddling, and she's like, aha, photos of boys hugging is always funny, and then she uses it to blackmail them later, and you see it's funny because gay. And, uh, yeah, you couldn't really do that joke now, so that's, uh, I don't want to, like, say that the show is problematic or anything, because they don't really go into that kind of thing at any other point that I can think of. It's just kind of one of those things where they didn't really think about that that much, even all the way back in 2004, so, yeah. Uh, the one line that I thought was really funny, um, is there's a part where... Skulker attacks a random kid in the library and then Dash and like another jock see him and are like, did you do that? No, but I can always appreciate quality bullying, which is hilarious. Danny ends up learning enough about the gorilla to help for them to team up with the gorilla and fight Skulker in the end. Then he manages to discover that the gorilla is actually female, which earns him enough credit to, to move his mark up from a D to a C. One of the things I really like about Danny Phantom is that, although he arguably comes from like a family of, of geniuses, Danny himself is not very smart, which again separates him from Peter Parker, making him even more of an underdog. Peter Parker at least got good grades and was and did well in school, but Danny doesn't. And I find it fun that that makes him even more of a loser and more of an underdog. So yeah, this episode isn't really anything too special, but it is important as it introduces both the Box Ghost and Skulker, who are some of the most recurring villains of the series. The Skulker having to fly away and check out a book on gorillas. It's funny enough for the episode, but it becomes more entertaining as they will often bring that joke back like much later on in the series. So this episode is more interesting in the fact that it introduces things that become staples of the series. And that's about it. Remember to come back tomorrow while we'll be watching episode 3. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more Danny Phantom.